Please be aware there are very many Sega Saturn models and the approaches taken in this video might not be suitable for yours. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. You might remember this is the Sega Saturn that I repaired the drive in here, the CD drive. I have now since obtained a controller and an RGB lead, which is connected to the telly. However, I want to have a more permanent power solution for this. And if you recall, it has a Japanese power supply, which I'm going to remove. You might recall I actually just tacked wires onto the circuit board here. In fact, just there on the connector last time. And that was enough to get it powered up and fired up on the TV. And I could see the UI and everything like that. So that was cool. It didn't take too much current either. It was under an amp, I think. So what I'm going to do is take this power supply off and whisk that away in the bin. Now there are people um, who are making really great alternative power supply boards and I'll link to them below. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just hack and slash my way through something using parts that I've got lying around. My proposed solution is very simple and unlike me, I've actually prepared some parts for it. So I have a piece of Vera board here and you can see there's some machined holes here. I was doing a little bit of experimentation. Um, was that even a word? Experimentation. So that I could find a whole combination that could fit down over those pins in the board. And you can see they do fit. That's a little bit bent there, but that's fine. They're not going to short out. So that allows me now to build up a circuit that can connect straight to the power on the board. Now, there's several ways of doing that. You could just have DC coming in and straight to there. And if you've got a suitable power supply, which according to this should be three amps, five volts, I wasn't seeing three amps. I was thinking a lot less, but so your mileage may vary. I'm going to uh, aim for an amp to an amp and a half supply on this. If you go straight from there, then that's it. You just put power in, the Sega Saturn will come on. You, of course, have this power switch, which is the original mains power switch. Now, if you're doing that, of course, you need to make sure your power coming in is really regulated. So if you do have a USB mini or micro and then a suitable wall wart for a Raspberry Pi, you could probably just get away with that totally and not do anything else. I'm going to put a barrel jack on the back, just so it's a bit more generic. Uh, hopefully center positive like all the power supplies in the world. And doing that though, I can't guarantee the output will be regulated. So I am going to have to put in a voltage regulator into the circuit. And I feel I'm going to be able to build all of that on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tuck this original power lead away because I don't want to mess with that, to be honest with you. I'm going to solder new wires straight to this switch. It's just a simple switch that's going to be on off to here. And then I'm going to wire up something from here to here. I'm going to have a little think about this. I've done an awful lot more than have a little think. I've had a little think and had a little play in Autodesk Fusion and see what I've come up with here. It's a little bit rough because I was a bit heavy handed with the uh, Noga on there, but apart from that, it's fine. So I've got designed is a little, I don't know what you'd call this, like a frame in a way that replaces the original one on the back. So if you see the original there, that's how that looks. So I've come up with this that can just be screwed into the back in place of that. And it does fit lovely. And just to show you how the barrel goes in here. I will be soldering wires onto the barrel and probably just gluing it in there. I was going to design a mechanical feature, but I was just a bit lazy on that. But you can have a look there. Nice. And then that will screw onto there. And just provide you a nice little DC jack ready to go. So I'm going to glue that now, and then we'll start preparing the rest of the board. Just before I shove this in now, I'm going to solder these wires onto it, because they're going to be impossible to get to once it's in there. If you've got some heat shrink, now's a good time to do it. I have got some heat shrink, but I'm exceptionally lazy, so I'm not going to bother. I don't think once this is in place, it's likely to be disturbed, to be honest with you. So that's the one. And then we'll just get the negative. I'm doing a doing it kind of like a dog leg style for no particular reason. It's just probably again because I'm too lazy to poke it through the holes on the barrel jack. But you've got more time. Take your time, do it right, do a better job than me. Let's fit this. Fresh epoxy. Let's see if I can do this without ruining it. It sometimes does get knackered. Bond together the two pack epoxy resin. No! 
We've got uneven worms. Mixy, mixy. In it goes. That's not going anywhere now. Especially after we work it into all the little nooks and crannies. Let's have a think about how we're going to hook up the rest. So what I've done, I've put a wire on one side of that power switch for now while I was there. The DC barrel actually has a wire that's long enough to go to here too, another orange wire. So I'm just going to go all the way to that and then from that. And we'll have a black wire and an orange wire that will be power to this. So these two pins on the left hand side nearest the power, these two are ground. So they're probably connected actually on the board anyway. And these two are five volts. But before we do anything, just as a, an aid memoir, I will put here some solder jumpers across all those things that are all joined together so I know on the piece of Vera board what is connected to what. And it's pretty easy to do. Look, you can see there, I've just jumped to those ones. If you put a piece of wire between them, you'll get a little bit of a more reliable bridge, but that's up to you what you want to do with it. I would probably say yes to adding, ouch, adding the wire. And what we're going to do though, you may or may not agree with this, but I'm actually going to solder to those pins that are sticking up. Just because it's really easy to do that, you can just tack them and it'll be very easy to remove if you want to undo this. So all of this is still pretty undoable. That's why I've left that original power lead intact. You can see I've popped that off now so I can just work on it totally independently because of course we're going to want to cut the tracks and we're using the piece of Vera board in an odd way because we're putting components on the solder side because I want to have it um, this pointing up effectively and it's the only way I can solder to those pins that way and also I'm going to put this little heat sink on my regulator because I think that's pretty sweet so I'm going to clip that on now just to make sure I've got space for it I have checked it should fit height wise so we do have three wires here input ground and output so we are going to need to cut this board um, potentially, or at least cut some tracks. So we're going to have the input, which is the orange wire that's already on the case. So that can come in anywhere, really. Input, ground and output. So I believe if you hook it in like this, the ground pins and the output pins actually line up just exactly where you want them. In fact, I'll bring them a bit more inboard like that. So that's exactly where you want them. And that gives you room to solder at the back. What that does mean though, is that we will have to cut one of the traces. So I'm just going to mark where I'm gonna to have to cut the trace. Oops, <laughs> I can hardly reach in there. There we go. And if you've got a dedicated Vera board little tool, I can't remember what you call it. It's like a little spinny tool that you, you can um, use to take that off. Use that now. Um, you could possibly use your no-go if you've got one. Um, the actual tool is a little bit like a, a Noga or a countersink. Let's see if that's done the trick. Um, almost. It's, it looks like it could still short out, so I'm just going to go another couple of twists to make sure there's no bridge at all. And there is no bridge at all. Have a look. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore, but you can just about see there's no bridge between there. So essentially, if we have the ground coming down this track, it will provide power to all of these areas, which is where those pins are going to come up. And if we provide five volts on the output here, these pins here will be able to grab that five volts. So far, so good. In fact, that's pretty much all we need to do. So we need to figure out though how to solder this on that away. So I think I'm going to try to remove our heat sink because that's definitely going to get in the way. And these lock on quite tightly. So if you look there, I think that is how we want our regulator. And hold it there very gingerly. If you are trying this with a linear regulator, go for an extremely high quality, as high quality as you can afford. Or if you're super keen, you can get a small switching power supply in the same footprint. Again, it's whether or not the Saturn genuinely needs that three amps or not. I, I can't see how it could need it, but I'm not Sega at the end of the day. I don't know. So you can see I've put that in at a bit of an angle. That's not great, to be honest. Ouch, it's quite hot too. That centre pin is the heatsink, by the way. Um, but what I'm going to do is just gently bend it forward. Oh, oh, oh. 
and it'll be okay. It did actually just lift the veriboard track there, so I'm going to strengthen those. If that happens, you don't worry, don't panic. You can just strengthen the veriboard tracks so you lift, lift them a bit by just bringing some solder on the other side of the joint, like that. We're almost ready. You can see I've actually cut some traces here because what I want to do is put some bigger pads for the ground and the input from the power switch. So you can see I've cut these here so they're not going to interfere so that the input can go, which is five, uh, say five volts, uh, nine volts or so from the power supply can go straight into there and the ground will go straight into this middle pin and then that's it. This outer pin then will become five volts but it's disconnected from this side so it won't short out but it will go to this here and power the Saturn. Let's fit it. Let's go ahead and screw this ever so slightly tacky. It's not quite dry, but that'll be fine for our purposes. We don't want to delay the video, do we? So we're just going to add those screws in the back. So I try not to touch it too much. Now I do hear that certain case colours of satin have issues with the plastic cracking here. So this one is not with any cracking at all. So be very cautious just in case you don't want to encourage it. And just to show you, it's, fit. it's actually quite nice. It does look pretty good here. I wouldn't advise you put AC in though. That's going to give you some odd results. And it is possible to, of course, make a totally replacement power supply with rectification, everything like we've got on the Famicom unit, but this is fine for now. Now one end, and I'm going to use the orange end here, it's going to go to the power supply switch which is the other the other um, contact from opposite this I'm going to zoom in as you can see what I mean the bottom one has this short wire and the top one is going to have this long wire and I'm just literally just tacking them on there if you can get to it without taking the switch out great I've managed to not have to take the switch out so if I can do it so can you I suppose it depends on what you're using to solder if you use one of those massive soldering guns like we used to have in the uh, 80s you might have a bit of trouble. I'm just going to hold it on there for a sec because that is a thick old switch. It's requiring a lot of heat there. There you go. Nicely. Pre-tin them. See, that's the pre-tinning trick. Of course, you can route your wires any which way you like, but there's loads of room in this case, fortunately. So that's going to go on there. So before we push it on totally, I'm just going to put it, let's hold it here so I can just solder those connections. So this is the ground connection. And I'm just going to pop it there, like that. And I'll show you the live connection. It's a bit, a bit more tedious because it's a much shorter wire, of course, but no problemo. Put that in there. There you go. We're almost there. Now, what you could do, if you really want to be cautious, before you fit this here and solder it in and then power it up, I would advise you put some power on here now, operate the switch and see what this guy does. Bench power supply is hooked up, my multimeter is on. Just going to jab these contacts into the appropriate areas and hit the switch with my little, little finger. Oh, I saw it flicker. I think I've got a dirty connection. There you go. 5.14 volts. That is good enough for me. Just going to push it down onto the pins and sit it home. As low as you can, really. It gives you more head height for that heat sink to dissipate. And that's what it looks like sitting in there, nice and neat. And what I'll do is just get in there and tack those contacts. Be brave. Don't worry about it. Be brave. Be, be, be brave. You will be totally able to undo this if you need to. It's just four little dabs and I'll zoom in so you can have a look at the quality of those dabs momentarily. That's the beauty of doing it on the Veriboard. It's giving you that extra surface area you need. It's a beauty, just make sure these two pins don't short to these two pins. I'm all hooked up now. I have the power coming in the back. I have a controller hooked up and of course it's going to my TV here so we should be able to hear sounds. Power on. We've got a Sega logo appearing. Nice green light. Oh, And we've got a picture 
of the uh, cockpit, I suppose you'd describe it, and something in Japanese, because of course it's a Japanese unit. Now I do know I'm having an issue with my laser. Um, but just to show you the normal operation, as you shut the case here, you can hear the CD detect going on and off, and on the screen of course it's saying that. Now the issue I had before though is when I did that, you see it's not spinning and it might require a little bit of twiddling. I think that's an independent issue, so your mileage may vary. Now you've got to appreciate the, I'm giving it a 7 volt input here and it's knocking off a couple of volts at an amp, you can do the mass, but it's dissipating heat, so this heat sink here is a little bit warm. Bear that in mind. It's not a linear, um, sorry, this is a linear power supply, not a switching power supply, so it will generate heat, uh, removing that excess. So that's a downside. But for me, just to test this and get going, I think that's fine. Um, if, if I wanted to have a super reliable, super cool machine that's not going to generate any heat in the case, then I probably would go for a, a better power supply. Or indeed, maybe a direct wire and have all of the heat generating components outside of the unit. Whichever way, it's up to you, but this is a way of doing it. Hopefully that's been of some use to you. And uh, if all goes well, if you do this yourself, you should be able to fit the lid back on. And I think I'm gonna have a little go while we're here. Oops. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you align that little doody hick there. That's not cooperate. Ah, yep, yeah, we've got it, we've got it. There. <laughs> and while you're at it, by the way, if you haven't, change your little battery in here. It's really easy to do. You just literally lever it out that way and swap that in. Then you won't get that time screen. As ever, thank you for watching. <laughs> There's always somebody who knows better. I thought I'd just show you this before I do conclude the video totally. And that's when you put the power on. I just want to show you what you see on the oscilloscope here. And you do see a nice stable output on that 5 volt. So the CD drive, you can hear me actuating it. It's not as if the laser or anything like that is absorbing all the power and pulling the power rail down. I definitely have an issue with this laser unit. Just as a last sanity check, bench power supply on around 5 volts. Flip it on. You can see we're drawing around the amp, the expected amp, and that's coming in bypassing our regulator straight there and this CD drive is still dead so ho hum